read quickly in uh, the book of Numbers, chapter 12 in the King James Version. And Miriam and Aaron spake against Moses because of the Ethiopian woman whom he had um, married, for he had married an Ethiopian woman. And they said, Hath the Lord indeed spoken only by Moses? Hath he not spoken also by us? And the Lord heard it. Yeah, we're going to, yeah. <laughs> we're coming back to this. Let's continue. And they said, or, and Now, the man Moses was very meek above all the men which were upon the face of the earth. And the Lord spake suddenly unto Moses and unto Aaron and unto Miriam. Come out ye three unto the tabernacle of the congregation. And the and they three came out. And the Lord came down in the pillar of the cloud and stood in the door of the tabernacle and called Aaron and Miriam. And they both came forth. And he said, Hear now my words. If there be a prophet among you, I, the Lord, will make myself known unto him in a vision and will speak unto him in a dream. My servant Moses is not so, who is faithful in all mine house. With him will I speak mouth to mouth, even apparently and not in dark speeches and the similitude, the similitude of the Lord shall be shall he behold therefore then were uh, were ye not afraid to speak against my servant Moses and the anger of the Lord was kindled against them and he departed and the cloud departed from off the tabernacle and behold Miriam became leprous white as snow and Aaron looked upon Miriam and behold she was leprous and Aaron said unto Moses, Alas, my Lord, I beseech thee, lay not the sin upon us, wherein we have done foolishly, and wherein we have sinned. Let her not be as one dead, of whom the flesh is half consumed, when he, ha when he cometh out of his mother's womb. And, the and Moses cried unto the Lord, saying, Heal her now, O God, I beseech thee. And the Lord said unto Moses, If her father had but spit in her face, should she not be ashamed seven days? Let her be shut out from the camp seven days, and after that let her be received in again. And Miriam was shut out from the camp seven days, and the people journeyed not till Miriam was brought in, in again. And afterward the people removed from Hezeroth and pitched in the wilderness of Paran. I'm telling you again and again, the first topic coming back up again an amazement okay so listen to this <clears throat> there's a lot here um we talked about the racial issue in the niv version that there is there may be an issue there but we're gonna talk about this in a in a similar fashion as to how we even started out with our own thoughts and feelings and where we think things should be Listen to this just at the beginning. And Miriam and Aaron spake against Moses because of the Ethiopian woman whom he had married, for he had married an Ethiopian woman. Okay, so remember, Moses was already uh, married and had some children too, and precisely um, with the his his wife, his previous wife, um, and then uh, that's where his father in law came and um, back after he brought the people out of uh, Egypt and gave uh, the father in law gave him sound advice, um, and so now you have his brother in Miriam. Um, I believe his half, half sister who remember when they left Egypt, they were praising the Lord. They were praising God. They were, uh, Miriam was leading the women in praise and, and worship and, and Aaron, you know, he is now a, uh, I would say an anointed priest, right? He has been cleansed and he is now a priest in the tabernacle. And here they are questioning Moses. Okay. Did they go to the Lord? No. They were complaining. They were in their own thoughts and feelings, whatever they may be. So we know in certain instances about the race issue. But again, go back to the NIV version. We'll definitely come back to this, you know, again, um, potentially in another version or, you know, there may be a live or whatever where we can talk about it. But thinking about Miriam and Aaron were only into their own thoughts and feelings. And so what happens? Consequence. 
because the Lord disciplines those he loves too in this lifetime. You can get disciplined in this lifetime. Absolutely. It doesn't say that Miriam and Aaron were doomed to, you know, where, no, it was, they were not thinking correctly so much so that they were in disgust. They wanted to take action against Moses. They were like, doesn't the Lord speak to us also instead of, you know what? Either it's not for us and we should mind, you know, our own business, or we should take it to the Lord and see what he says first. And then if he says, yeah, this is a blessed union, you know, this is correct. Then my thoughts and feelings, for whatever reason I had those, were wrong. Right? And so what happens? What happens? What happens? Verse 10, and the cloud departed from off the tabernacle, this after the Lord had talked to the, both of them. And behold, Miriam became leprous, white as snow, and Aaron looked upon Miriam, and behold, she was leprous. And you know what? Look at Moses, turning the other cheek. Look at Moses, or he, he's like, you know what? Verse 13, and Moses cried out unto the Lord, saying, heal her now, O God, I beseech thee. And then what happens? The Lord's and the Lord said unto Moses, if her father had but spit in her face, should she not be ashamed in seven days? Let her be shut out from the camp seven days. And after that, let her be received in again. So she was treated as unclean. She had let sin and wickedness into herself and and voiced her her wicked opinion. If it was righteous, then the leprosy would not have been justified. The the even with Aaron and seeing his sister and knowing that that's what happened, and Aaron also pl uh, potentially playing a role in it, Ca uh, allowing for wickedness to happen in which causes harm to someone, bringing past to present. Thinking about that, when we do not live in the spirit when we decide to take things into our own hand those can be damaging they not only can affect us they can affect people our loved ones around they may not even affect us in a in an immediate negative way like a physical way but they may damage someone else to a catastrophe something even small even even something that you think oh it was just a little lie nothing in the Bible and in life, sin is all one level, whether you lie or c commit a heinous act, okay? It's all, the wages of sin is death, period. And that's why we had to have the Lord, the Lord to come and bring his holy son, Jesus, to die on the cross for our sins, right? So thinking about this, when we don't, once again, when we do not allow for the Holy Spirit when we do not listen to the Lord and we just act on our own because it's quick and easy. Be ready for consequences. Be ready for things to fall apart. Even if you are a believer, it can absolutely happen. But we are to live our life walking in the Spirit. And by doing so, that'll help avoid all of this unnecessary stuff so we can not have to worry about it. So think about that in, in your walk with the Lord in, in life. If you don't have a walk with the Lord, I encourage you to listen because you're here for a reason. <laughs> if you click on this, if you click, you're watching, you're still here, you're here for a reason. Lord's trying to speak to you. <laughs> Amen and hallelujah. Before we go on though, what kind of thoughts or feelings come to your mind when we read over this? How does it make you feel and what does it make you think?